And we're off. This shit's going crazy. This is legit now. All right. We're no longer in the same room. Weird. I'm pretty sure the audio is going to be super not great. Yeah. They, they, they can all deal for one few episodes. Yeah, I'm going to try to figure out a better way to do this. Like, I said, I don't want to spend too much money at this point because who knows who's going to be keeping whose job. Mm-hmm. Very fair. Very true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I still have a mortgage. Okay. A mortgage, I assume you said? Yeah, mortgage. Yeah. Cut, cut out a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think we're going to have to be, we're going to have to wait a beat when someone's talking just because I don't know what the response time is going to be. Not too good. It could be, it could, we could have less time. But. Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to an episode, the quarantine episode number one um, for the F word. I am your host, G, and with me is still Anthony and Bass. What's up, guys? What's up, guys? What's up, boys? Yeah, so obviously sounds very different because we are at our respective homes. We are doing our part to, I I believe, is slow the curve. Mm -hmm. Um, Self-isolation, I think. Make yeah. self distancing. Yeah, social distancing. Social I'm distancing. Yeah. Not quite at the self isolation myself, but <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, I've been uh, at home for since Monday because I went to work for like a Monday, and then we had a, like a meeting, and then they sent us all to work from home, and so I've been home ever since, and I think I've left twice. So I've been, huh. and I'm in a condo, not a house, which is a little bit of a, a little bit of a pain because there's not much, not too far I can go. Oh, How have yeah. you guys been holding up? Uh, Landmark just uh, like quote unquote laid off people for the corona because we're closing the theaters. I think all Canadian theaters are pretty much closed at this point. Uh, but they did come in a clutch today because we're running out of toilet paper and they are giving some to the workers. Nice. Yeah. That's nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I guess that's going to be like the thing. It's like with restaurants and stuff, they're just going to be giving stuff away. Like I know my old school in Calgary um sate they just gave over ten thousand, like units or so of food because the school's closed and mm, it's a culinary nice. program so they the, the food has to go somewhere right otherwise it's just yeah. garbage yeah yes. that's yeah i don't know i'm kind of still working not working i've still been on layoff anyway so it's kind of nothing new on my end at the end of the day but we're still slowing down being precautious all that kind of stuff Interesting. So I have my regular mic. Anthony has a gaming Mm -hmm. headset, right? And so does Vass. So again, I'm going to do my best to try to make the episode sound as close to our regular program as possible. I don't see it happening, but um, I have heard other podcasts that use Zoom because that's what we're using right now. And you know, they don't sound terrible. My buddy Robbie in Seattle, uh, out of the blank podcast, he does this all the time. He uses Zoom and it doesn't sound terrible. It's just going to take us some time to uh, to do the necessary tweaks. It seems like audio quality has always been Is your like, uh, problem. headset like fully in? Mine? Mm-hmm. Um, my microphone is in. Can you hear me better now? Well, it's okay. It's like I can, I can hear you. Is it like only me that's like, it just sounds like... It's black. crackling. Yeah, it's yeah. crackling a little bit here and there on my end as well. But uh, it, 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 just... it might just be what we're hearing. It may not be exactly what's being recorded. I don't know. Who knows? Um, yeah, so <laughs> it, it does have that crackling effect. I just cranked my thing all the way. So I'm really hoping that um, if you guys can hear me, that's good. Um, I'm hoping that it doesn't distort, but I'll have to lower that down in post. Um, yeah, for some reason, it doesn't pick it up as well but i don't know like i said it's a tester if anyone is listening to this i really really appreciate it some uh, updates though on our part where we started another instagram account Mm -hmm. and we're starting off fresh it was anthony's idea and i think it's a great idea and so far it's already growing faster than our other one did so Hmm. (laughs) we're at 40 right now uh 41 i think which is nice it's hype lots of like local support but still like that's kind of how it goes algorithms kind of kicking us in the ass but we're still getting some people coming from hashtags and explore feed and shit like that. So it's going nice. Yeah. It's, um, well, like I said, the, the other one is, has been at like 137 to 141 for like five months. 
mm. it's just like completely plateaued, um, not doing anything. So uh, at least this one, it's already at 40, which is way faster than the yeah. other one took. Um, but the cool thing is, is that we are finally combining the entertain facts model and the F word like fully. It's like everything's now together under kind of one umbrella, which is super sweet. The audio clips are doing like really well. Like I actually are love they? them. Like they sound so nice. Yeah. Like I have yeah. friends, like even just like friends I don't really talk to, like liking the audio clips because it's like it's funny. Like especially your Christian Bale Batman one where you talk about him just crippling people. That was one of my favorites. I was looking at like, I forgot we talked about this. And then I was like, this yeah. has to be it. So if you go to the dot F, so E F dot word dot podcast, you can take a look at some of those clips. And I really do like, I like that image that you put in the front and like the little caption that you have. I think that mm-hmm. also helps because I put it on my regular account and I, I, I'm literally, I'm literally responding to somebody right now that asked me how we did it. Um, and if anyone's curious as to how to make like audio waveforms and stuff, I signed up for wave.co it's W a V V E dot C O. And I get 30 minutes a month now before it was just for free and you get 30 seconds, but I signed up for the $18 one. Cause I think they had like a $2 discount and we can do so many. And, and now that we have the captions too, so you don't necessarily have to um, listen to it. But then all of a sudden you look at the caption and it's got like a funny thing like, yeah, Batman's been investing in wheelchairs and it's like, wait a minute, I got to hear this thing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, it's, it's sweet. So I'm, I'm actually super stoked with this new Instagram account. It's like mm-hmm. combining, it's like all the origins, everything coming full circle. Um, yeah, I don't have too, too much in terms of news because all the news is just everything shutting down because of the virus. Everything's getting um, delayed. Everything's shutting down. Except for... They have the what we call it, the um, game stops and stuff like that. They're an essential service at this time. Did you hear that? Oh, yeah, I yeah, did. yeah. Is that that's weird, isn't it? Eh, yeah, yes and a... no, but it's because everything can be digitally downloaded. So the store itself is probably not essential per se, but I, I could see where they're coming from because they're like, oh, people are going to game now. Many people aren't working as it is. Some people don't have that capability of like, oh, I, you know, they're they're type of business continues and then they can do what they need to do others is like yeah no you're there's nothing for you to do so just go home be on ei or whatever and there you go until this is all over so eh, I, I see it but i don't know i don't know because i feel like also a lot of game stops are in uh like they're in a most mall of sorts and like most oh yeah shutting down anyway mm-hmm. so if that happens like the game stop's gonna be gone anyway but yeah uh, I don't know. I, I respect it because like just before, like I think yesterday, mm-hmm. yesterday I bought Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening for the Switch. Nice. And like, I'm, it's, it's a fucking challenging game. Like it's so like, it's actually hurts. I've never actually played a Legend of Zelda game like to this extent where I've actually like played a lot of it. Like and actually yeah. gone like a long distance. Like the puzzles in dungeons are fucking confusing as all hell. Cause like it gives you no direction whatsoever. It just tells you this cryptic fucking message. And then you're just like, I've been watching this guy's walkthrough as I play because I have no idea what the fuck I'm supposed to do, but it's pretty fun that's, so far. I'm enjoying it. That's classic Zelda right there for you because we actually had a book for yeah, Ocarina of Time. Power. Yeah. Like, well, it was amazing. But you kind of you kind of needed it and you kind of didn't. I don't know. It was, G, you remember? The Ocarina of Time the, book? Yeah, the book in general. So it's like now they have oh, YouTube, yeah. they can do walkthroughs. Well, we had the books too. And the that was like the big thing. It's like, oh, you play the game, you try to play it through just uh, on your own and see what you can do. And then once you get the book, you play it again. You're like, oh, I missed all this shit kind of thing. Yeah. Thing, oh, so. yeah. No, it's uh, but, that, that book. Every time I look at it, it just gives me like nostalgic feels like just yeah. the, like the look of it. Mm-hmm. And I know we didn't buy it until after we had finished the game. Like, I think both of us had finished the game first and then we oh, went yeah. and bought it to like try to do a, like a, uh, the closest thing we can get to 100 percent completion because there was yeah. no like trophies or completions back then. Oh, yeah, exactly. And I mean, it was a less uh, extensive game. Like, that's why I'm like, it'd be great to have it like, um, have it redone on a different engine. I know, Anthony, you sent me the link for the Unreal engine, mm-hmm. but my thing would be like kind of Assassin's Creed style. If they made it with that engine and probably Odyssey, I would say the most, uh, that style would be beyond amazing. And all the side quests you could end up doing, like they could really expand that game. I really Crazy. hope they so, end up doing, doing something for Legend of Zelda in that style because if people want it, like Breath of the Wild was kind of the 
closest thing to it. But even then, like, yeah, I think if they just do more games that style, it'd be fucking golden. And I think they are doing a sequel to Breath of the Wild. I think next year. So. Oh yeah, it would. It did amazing, and it was such a tough game for people. They said so. I don't know. Legend, like the thing I did, like I love the Switch, but I also hate the fact that all of their games. No matter, like, even Breath of the Wild that came out in, like, 2017 mm. is still $80. Mm. Like, it's fucking insane. Like, their games, like, even on Boxing Day, their games go, like, $10 less on sale. Oh, yeah. Because they know people are still going to fucking buy it. And it's true. It's smart on Nintendo, like, not to just give away fucking games. But it's just, like, it's getting to a point where it's just... I can't buy all these games I want to try out on the Switch because I just physically... Or I, guess, I just can't... I straight up can't afford it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's um, I want I was gonna get one too. So the the promotion I got and was re- like required travel, and a lot of it would be by myself, like to places like four hours out of town and like small towns and stuff. So I'd be by myself for like three or four days. So I was actually gonna get a switch. Now that we're quarantined, obviously not the or self isolating, self isolating. Um, that's not the case. But I still want to play Breath of the Wild because I love it. Unreal, and I know I think like Ethan. And I have been like, we, we still reference Ocarina of Time on the regular. Uh, but, you know, he said that one is just so good. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sure, yes, like, honestly, Ocarina there's so many. Like, even, I think with The Witcher got ported to the Switch. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, how he, that's how he's playing it, is on there. Mm-hmm. Like, there's so many good ports. It's just becoming, like, a better fucking system. Like, it mm-hmm. hasn't had any downgrades. Like, I love it. Like, I bought mine in 20, mm-hmm. I think 2018 or, like, yeah. late 2017 and it's still running fine i still love yeah. it i don't get a lot of use out of it but like i'll play with friends and like whenever i go out it, it the only limitation to the switch is the games that they provide for it and but you know what i would if i could i'd buy a switch right now and i'd use it for those specific games and that's mm-hmm. it i'd be fine with that whereas like playstation and xbox you tell they have their style of game and some are in interchangeable some odd but yeah nintendo's on its own kind of path in a way with exclusives yeah nintendo fucking owns it yeah and well i actually was so when he first said he was playing the witcher 3 his wife got it for him on the switch and i was like okay well i was thinking that maybe he'd use it like on the big screen like when you can do that yeah oh yeah docked Um, but they downgraded the docking because it doesn't look good so they don't have the docking option so then i was like man you're gonna play like a game like that on a small screen but then he showed it to me and i was like oh this is actually like way better than i thought it was going to be oh yeah no like even handheld mode like they're fucking like, i think it's like 720 hand held like for most games it's so still like so. you don't even notice it if, unless you're like one of those snobs yeah and i was playing it i was like oh this is hella fun like i wish i had it but i'm glad i don't because i'd be playing it way more than now because now obviously it's turning on the playstation and then and then playing it uh he also has like the the gaming uh controllers like that that attached to it is that what they are uh yeah, yeah. Joy cons yeah i think so and i'm like oh man this thing feels really good the only thing i don't like like the colorful ones right i think so yeah like but they just look like it was like you can, it's an add-on instead of the original one like it, it actually feels like you're holding a controller on each hand but mm-hmm. I, I forget what the name of it was um the only thing i didn't like was that two of the buttons were switched around and you couldn't change it and yeah so, that's like, a big fucking issue like i really dislike it because that's the biggest thing if i could change the like controller layout it would be so good because there are so many fucking like times where x on playstation and like wherever or i don't know i think it's b on the switch controller so like if i press x to like press okay it's actually back on the switch mm. so there's lots of moments where i just like fucking back out of things or cancel downloads or shit like that just because i'm so accustomed to playstation yeah no for sure and i, I again i was looking out the way i said dude like your jump button and your loot button are in like messed up spots so i kept throwing mm-hmm. me off but yeah i just didn't have that option that's okay. it's like the it's like Thorn Ragnarok. It's like the red, the white, pick a color. <laughs> pick a button. <laughs> um, that make gaming a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so. Uh, PS5 was released. They had a full breakdown. I didn't watch it because I was working. And uh, it's been really tough trying to focus at work as it is, let alone mm-hmm. having to get all the news for PS5. But it looks like it's beefier, you know, as, as it was expected. Um, this, so this is just a quick breakdown of the CPU compared to the Xbox. No, you know what? We'll just talk PS5. So 
<laughs> I just want to look at something big. Like the RAM is 16 gigabytes, 256 bit, which is about the same as the Xbox uh, memory bandwidth. So 10 gigs at 560 for the Xbox. This is 448 gigs, just as is. Mm -hmm. um, they both have 4K. Internal storage is 825 gigs SSD, and it's got some. It's got expendable, expandable, sorry, storage. Whereas the Xbox has a expansion card. This just has an SSD slot. Yeah. So this thing looks like it's going to be super powerful. However. Yeah. That so I, that... I, what I saw though on IGNs was not to cut you off. Sorry, but like no, no, no. I think no. Xbox is more powerful than the PS5. Yeah. Well, I don't really care. Like, I'm not one of those. I haven't like even the things you just listed off. Like, I have no idea what the fuck they mean. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I, I well, started reading yeah. them off. I'm like, I don't think I'm the right person so, to the storage. I'll explain a little bit. That so they both have SSD cards, which is a solid state drive, which essentially it just a lot faster and that's what's going to give it that capability to start up quick uh no load screens that kind of stuff so that's what you can accomplish with an ssd and um the way the ssd works compared to a regular hard drive is that hard drives the more you add to it it gets a little bit slower and bogged down whereas the ssd will never lose any uh power like you'll always have full power even at full capacity kind of thing so this is all SSDs. They're both custom, it looks like. Obviously, you get a few extra gigs on the Xbox. Um, and then with the extra expansion card of one terabyte, that could just be the regular one. So it depends what you're running. It depends what you... That's where it gets a little bit more technical and what you, what you put on the expandable versus what's on the thing. And then it seems like PS5 has only an ssd slot because again they are designed differently yeah um so yeah that's basically what those mean the ssd just makes you'll never lose power and speed which is what they're going for with these uh, next gen um uh consoles so it's like no load screens and um yeah mm -hmm. so well i'm excited because i remember hearing uh they were saying games like gta 5 that have like stupid long load screen times would have like absolutely zero load time oh yeah so, right because like, again like, gta 5 is Literally like two fucking minutes at least. Like I haven't played in a while, but I don't think I'm exaggerating it that much. It was fucking ridiculous how long the load times were. It, it gets like that sometimes for sure. Yeah. Well, even even The Witcher when I'm playing it right now, um, if you die, it takes longer oh, yeah. than normal. I know. I think it was Assassin's Creed Odyssey, the same kind of deal. Even Origins, like some of these bigger bigger games are kind of pushing the limits of the PS4. Yeah. They're yeah, they're definitely having a little bit longer loading yeah. in, in certain spots, like to fast travel in The Witcher, for instance, right away. But when you die, it takes so much longer. It's yeah, it's strange. What a I lot thought was RPG cool though. Issue, yeah. yeah, what I thought was cool though was that the top 100 games will be getting backwards compatibility. It's not going to be like every game or PS1 games or PS2 games. It seems like it's the top 100 PS4 games that will be getting backwards compatibility. Is that right? I think so, and that seems fair. Like I don't even like I'm not yeah. gonna complain about it because honestly, like I don't think I play many of the games that are under top hundred anyway. Uh, right. I think for like new releases, like all 2019 slash 2020 games should be able to be ported over, like regardless. Yeah. Uh, but like even then, like for the older games, like past 2018, I can't really imagine anyone still playing them religiously that would buy a P PS5 and be angry that they can't play it. Mm -hmm. yeah I, i'm i'm still curious about the price because ever ever since i sent you that and you're like is the, is the legitimate estimation based on that so this guy named colin moriarty which you probably know from the game over greggy and they were on ign a while back he actually created his own video game for the vita which is also cool hmm. uh, but he was saying how the playstation 5 will cost 499.99 that's probably american so canadian don't be like what 650 uh or maybe like 590 or something like that with tax um, but he broke down the prices of the other one so in 1995 the original playstation was 511 dollars and seven cents uh, with inflation adjusted so it was 299.9 today's standards it'd be 511 dollars the playstation 2 which came, was also 300 dollars would be worth 452 if it came out again inflation adjusted playstation 3 was 599.99 which would have been 779 dollars adjusted and the playstation 4 it's actually cheaper than the playstation 3 at 451. i was actually i was reading up on that too and i was fucking shocked to see the ps3 cost 750 like that was insane Crazy. to me 
Well, that, that's what it would cost now. Like again, that's with infl- oh, no. inflation. Oh, I see. It was okay. it was six hundred though, which is two hundred dollars more than the PS4. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. Like and three hundred dollars more than the PS2. Like it's so crazy how expensive the PS3 was. Well, I guess it was like wasn't it, it was the first console to actually have blue? Uh, what's it fucking called? Blu-ray, right? It was the first console to have Blu-ray, wasn't it? So I guess that could have been reason as to why. And now it's kind of so. just a standard. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, also, I just realized. <laughs> so the timer on the Zoom thing is supposed to be forty minutes. Mm-hmm. I put thirty-eight hours. So, oh fuck! Well, uh, I don't know how long this thing's gonna run for because we only have the forty minutes. There's, I might end up uh, getting like the actual like full version. We'll see. I haven't signed yeah. yet. Um, I did quit smoking on Sunday. Um, yeah, yeah. vaping or just smoking. No, 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 like everything entirely, mostly because mm. this COVID thing attached to respiratory. And it's already, mine's already like compromised, but I don't want to like all the way, like fuck it yeah. up. Um, but it's testing my patience right now because it's not the fact that I want to smoke. It's the fact that I'm getting really snacky, but I mm. don't want to eat all of our food and be left with nothing because I'm snacky. So I can't smoke. I can't eat anything. And so now I'm stuck in this weird spot where like I'm super uncomfortable always. Just one of those things where it's like, it's not that you want to smoke, but it's like you have nothing else to do. Yes, yeah. so you're like I can, you know. It's like it's it's like kind of one of those just weird hot like habits, like eating, for example. Like you're not hungry, but you're like not doing anything else. May as well just eat something. Exactly. <laughs> so now I'm not doing either because again, I don't want to eat up our entire food supply because mm-hmm. of that. Um, but for those listening, if it does cut out while we're doing it, we'll probably just end up trying to record again and splicing them together. I still have to figure out how the, this Zoom thing is going to work. Um, but yeah, the PlayStation thing was pretty interesting. Uh, I'm gonna get it for sure. It's gonna be sweet. I'm like not sure because again, like if it costs like a thousand bucks, I may as well just like invest in a PC. Uh, well, if, if those yes numbers no. are true, if those numbers are true though, and it is it is is at that price, then that's fine. Mm-hmm. But yes, if it is a thousand dollars for some reason, I don't think it will. But if it is, I, I still don't know about the PC. Vast, you know more about this. PC man, a thousand. I think it gets you an okay rig, but uh, my initial investment when I completely rebuilt and I and I when I first started building a PC to get serious in a gaming was for StarCraft Two. The PC I had could not play it one bit, so I had to upgrade absolutely everything. So I, I upgraded and whatever, and I had a video card that I was ah eh, so so, and. After that, it was just a snowball. Eventually, like, okay, you had to swap out parts. And then now I'm at a point, and I, I think my initial investment was probably about 1500 to get it up. Like, that's monitor. I, I got a decent monitor, like my case, you know, all your components in there to get it at a pretty decent level. You're spending between, like, 1000 to 1500 And 1000 is kind of on the light side, and it depends what you put into it. Uh, but... If you want to say grand scheme, you're going to keep upgrading. Right now, I'm at another generational gap where I'm like five, ten years behind. Yeah. And the motherboard no longer supports the new parts. So that has to get switched out. The CPU has to get switched out. And it's like, you're going to, before I'm done with this thing, I probably have invested easily uh, 2500 So it'll double for sure by the next time. And I'll be, you know, it just never ends with PC, unfortunately. But if you do it right, you'll kind of, you'll kind of get to a decent point where you're like, okay, you can get ahead of the curve for five, five years. And then after that, you got to start looking at upgrading again. It's how serious you want a game, but the console being at a thousand, it's still an okay price. Cause it's, it's a plug and play uh, type of unit, right? You don't have to worry about anything else. Just so basically it's the exact it. same though. So for PlayStation 4 has had the lifespan of like yeah. six years, PC yeah. say about five years years anyway yeah. okay then yeah that makes that brings shit more that brings stuff more into light yeah exactly it, it, that's the thing that's the problem with the the pc you'll almost never be satisfied you'll always want to swap out the parts whereas like the the consoles you'll probably be content with what mm-hmm. you have and like how much better could these things get in the end of the day until like 8k is a big big yeah. thing in which case you'll need the you'll need the tv to support it you'll need the, obviously the console to support it and the developers have to actually get to that point because that's actually probably the next big step is that these developers might not be able to keep up with uh, the demands of those consoles quite yet. I don't know. Uh, I might be off on that. I'm not well, sure. Well, 8K but... games would probably take up an ass ton of storage. Yeah. So this, like these next gen, did they talk anything about storage-wise? Like how much actually like gigabytes or terabytes are going to be able to hold? 
Because it has to be terabytes at this point. Like, there's no so, way they can send out a gigabyte fucking console. Well, you saw that that snapshot clip that G was talking about was from IGN. I think they posted it. That mm-hmm. kind of side by side comparison. So like, you had 826 uh, gig on SSD for the PS5. You had one terabyte on the Xbox side, and then it also has room for a hundred terabyte expansion. Um, and then the other, and then the S, the basically with the PS5, let's say you get another 800. Uh, 25 gig or 800 whatever gig mm-hmm. SSD to attach to it, and that's what it made it seem like it was. It can only support another SSD in there. I'm not sure about external memory, but mm-hmm. it'll just keep snowballing like that, and you'll just have to, I don't know, dump stuff on an external drive, and if you don't play it anymore, what have you, or they'll have a cloud-based uh, setup. Like, I mean, Xbox already has the Google Drive. So you're already mm-hmm. kind of set for that if you truly need it. Like, you know what? I'm going to send this game data up to the cloud for now, and then my thing can be kind of free. Uh, PS5, I don't know if it has anything like that. I think it just work, relies on hard uh, hardware kind of thing. Well, if my external hard drive works for my PS4, I should be good. But, yeah, I don't know. It's just like 825 is still a lot. But then again, there are games <laughs> like Call of Duty that released 100 fucking gigabyte uh, Battle Royale on top oh. of their 100 gigabyte like, game. I think if you Jesus. had the game, it was only like 50 Extra. gigabyte to download it, but still, oh. that's like 150 out of like eight. So there, that whatever. Warzone you're talking about? Yeah. So that'll, if you buy just that, that's 100 gig? Uh, if you, like, Warzone's free. So yeah. if you don't have Modern Warfare, you can just download Warzone and it's 100 gigabytes. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. G, like, average 60 gig a game now for download do you know um i would say some of these are getting closer to like 75 on average i would say yeah um but yeah you might be right on 60 i mean average. Um, actually what was red dead redemption download size it was like over 100 i think 109 yeah. uh so that was red dead redemption uh even the witcher 3 witcher 3 download size was uh Oh, it's not telling me. Looks like it's only 50. I'm trying to hmm. search 2020 average video games to file size 2020, see if anyone has. So on Quora, which is kind of just like oh, great site. anyone can answer, yeah. someone said it's about 101. And I think for the higher up games, like for the actual mainstream games, yeah, like yeah, place. Red Dead 2 was 150, it says. Oh, shit. Let me see. It has a whole list here. Warzone download size is that massive, 150, right? Is that what you guys are saying? Uh, Warzone is 100, I think. I, yeah, I know at 100. least 100. It could be 150. Destiny uh, 2 is 165. Yeah. Gears of War 4 was 112. Uh, GTA 5 without any mods is 70, which is pretty reasonable. Crazy. Call of Duty Infinite Warfare was 101. Black Ops 3, 113. And then Quantum Break is 178. Holy fuck. <laughs> and then, yeah, Call of Duty is 175. <laughs> Perfect. One more fair. Fucking insane. Interesting. Um, yeah, no, these are getting much, much bigger. So, I mean, obviously these, like, really, like, the need for all of this stuff is for that reason, too, because mm-hmm. they're just getting so much bigger. Like, I've got an external hard drive on mine. It's a terabyte connected. And so most of my stuff is saved on there, which is actually super handy. I should have done it a long time ago because I actually deleted a bunch of games I didn't want to delete. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah. Um what else we got? What else we got? I guess it extended us 40 minutes. Zoom. I saw this report that Zoom was actually going to give people more than 40 minutes on the free service because of what's going on. Also, Netflix is going to be throttling back their quality a little bit to be is able to handle sure? the bandwidth. Sure. I, know, I know they were asked to, but are well, they? Quality I, I, and what means? In terms of just like the HD one. So they won't be necessarily HD, but they'll obviously be very viewable. And so every little bit of HD that you take off will probably help overall for so for more people to be able to stream it because and with my discount i pay for ultra 4k but still so you pirate things no but i think it's now. hey I, hey be cool just just for once just be cool I, I, just. I, it's i don't think it's for that it's actually like the ones that are through netflix directly that they're yeah. straight up hd like it has nothing to do with what you pay for in terms of your internet yeah it's just gonna be that the quality oh no but see, i think you pay for my the account. actual like Netflix I, account. Though, I pay for Netflix. the actual like 
yeah i pay for the high it, high def like ultra 4k otherwise you can't get it full even if it says uh ultra high def you can't actually be, unless you pay for that uh, uh that bandwidth kind of thing oh, so yeah and and with that you have the extra profiles plus people can watch at the exact same time because otherwise on the lower end you'd get kicked out and that's what was happened before so you have to nice. upgrade to that one otherwise you know you can't have i think four people can watch on the high end one at the same time so gotcha well they might not do that for yours they might just do it for every all the regular accounts which if that's yeah. yours then that's my just too, so i guess i'm lucky yeah like if you don't yeah. if you don't pay for that full-blown thing then they can throttle it back a little bit but like mm. i don't know like i went and got a bunch of dvds like our seinfeld dvds and some other ones and i'll be watching them and they're not in hd at least most of them aren't actually funnily enough i have been like the past three days i have no idea why but i've been on a fucking kitchen nightmares tear like i think <laughs> nice i've so watched good. 19 episodes in the past three days the british and I'm one is fucking the best one. loving it the, the british one is the best know, one the british, else... british one's more tame though isn't it no but the thing like, is he doesn't like, yell in the uk ones no he does but he yells in a different way like he yells like he's actually like like uh, not for TV kind of thing. It, it's mm-hmm. actually I prefer the original because it's like it's as real as you can get. It feels real, more as real as you can get. Like when he's talking to people, when he's when he's making the suggestions, like how legit he is. His his swearing or his his manner is like it's it's different. It's not as comical because um, when I watch I the American Rams, version, comical insults though. Oh fuck. Oh yeah, those are those are so funny, but like. Yeah. I don't know. There's something I like. I prefer. I just prefer the UK ones a lot better. Yeah, but it feels it's, more authentic. Just it there. definitely. Yeah, it, it feels like it's like, it's like the difference between an indie movie and some over the blown, overblown top, mm-hmm. over the top, and overblown movie that they just threw money at. Probably the accents. That's why. Uh, no. <laughs> One of my favorite insults, though, is an actual true insult, like nothing over the top. But he's talking to the owner, and he's like, "I have never met anyone in my life." I believed in as little as you. And I'm like, you know what? If I yeah. heard that from someone, that would actually like dig deep. Like there's no panini head. No, you fucking donkey. That's just a straight up like heart yeah. to heart insult. It's like, fuck. Yeah. Um, I forget which episode that was. I, I remember him saying it, but it I... was uh, to the one diner guy in Hollywood. The guy who's an actor. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. He wanted to, uh, he had that pizza place. Yeah. He had that um, fucking yeah. stupid combination shit. Yeah, yeah, that was so weird. That was, see, a lot of those are so frustrating, especially when you look at the menu, because I've worked in restaurants that oh, I know. have massive, massive menus, and I've worked in restaurants that have a single page, you know, uh, four starters, seven main uh, food items, and three mm-hmm. um, uh, three desserts, um, like salads and stuff are thrown yeah. in there too. But it's just like such a difference, and I actually – don't know which one's worse to be honest i actually no, i do it's it's the one with the overblown menu even yeah. though the other one was harder to make because it was it required more technical skill the fact that you have a menu with like 150 items on there it's just like unbearable well my i also have a question because i don't recall i've ever sent food back in a restaurant like even if it was like somewhat shitty i just eat it like have you guys ever sent food back because like it seems like it happens so often in the shows like where the restaurant he goes to like it literally happens like all the time it just seems crazy i haven't you haven't i think i sent it once it was like really bad like it was cold i was like hey i'm like no i need you to make this again please (laughs) yeah i'm I'm a big wuss it it has to be it it has to be really bad if it didn't taste as well as i thought it did i'll eat it and like I'll let them know like, Hey, it wasn't as good as last time kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then it's up to them if they want to comp me or not. Like they'll hear the bad feeling. I'm like, listen, I ate it. I'm not going to, you know, complain. Mm-hmm. That's, you, know, you asked how it was. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm like, I was okay. I said, it was a little of this, whatever. Uh, but typically I'll just use it in the bottom. And like, I think I've only set it back once and that's where it was like really bad. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Most of the time I, I just like suck it up. Like I just don't, care i'm like you know i'm because i always go to the restaurant like i always like fast for like hours before i go out to eat somewhere so i when i get there i'm gonna fucking like devour the food so by the time i get there i'm just always so hungry i just don't give a fuck and just end up like devouring the plate mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah i what i do um and mo- first of all I'm, I'm yeah i'm very um 
I'm, I'm just very calm about it. Like, and, and especially after having worked in the kitchen mm-hmm. myself and having been a server, like I'm, I'm very lenient, but a lot of times it's like, you know, I could be a little bit, I guess I could be aggressive, but it's just really hard for me too, because I don't know. It's always that case of I've been there. So if I haven't had a meal that I don't like, and obviously it's not a restaurant that I know, I'll put my whole napkin over top of it. So I'll just put my napkin over top of it. They won't see what I haven't eaten and then I'll just send it back. There's probably a chance that they're just going to dump it out anyways. Um, yeah. And they can find out then, mm-hmm. but I don't know. I know that feedback is super important too. So I usually, I will give my feedback. It's just at that time, I don't know. I, I'm pretty bad for not voicing it, but I've also haven't had that many terrible experiences. Like I know yeah. some people that have, but I haven't had many really bad experiences at restaurants. So at least not enough that it well, working cause me to continue. continue I know you, complain. you've had some fucking shitty stories because you worked at actually legitimate restaurants. But I remember the biggest BS moment at Trifon's Pizza was when uh, a family came and they ordered a vegetarian pizza from us and they were apparently talking talking to uh, my coworker, Blake, and they told Blake they didn't like the pizza. He said, okay, that's fine. You know, just come up and we'll refund you for it. So 20 minutes pass by and they come up for their refund. And I asked them, because I was like cashier, I said, okay, can I see the pizza? And literally there is like one triangular piece of the pizza left. Like they ordered a whole 15 inch. Oh yeah. And yeah, so okay. I'm looking at yeah. them like, yeah, no, you're not getting a fucking refund. Like, well, it was bad. And the guy said we could. Like, well, if it was so bad, why the fuck could you eat the whole pizza? Mm-hmm. Like, get it on my face and I, I, I refuse I sort of told him no because uh, Tino our boss wasn't there at the time but I did not give a fuck when it came to Trifon's Pizza I would like chirp customers if they were BSing me I'd like call them out on their bullshit uh, but the two cooks in the back Blake and Kevin eventually gave in and gave them the refund uh, it was like a $44 pizza too. <laughs> so it's fucking stupid like it wasn't like just like kind of like $10 fucking refund like it was a huge order mm-hmm. and uh, when Tino found out, he sided with me, so that was hype. I didn't get in trouble, but I remember just bullshit like that. Like I just could not stand working at a restaurant with people like that. It was so annoying. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough one. If they've eaten everything, at that point, it's no excuse. It's like, sorry, you ate everything. Like if you didn't actually like it, you wouldn't have eaten it. Exactly. And I've never, yeah, I've, most of the time I eat my food anyways. But uh, Anthony, yeah, no. have you seen the movie Waiting? Oh, so good. I have not. What is oh, Waiting? It's oh, it's exactly dude. what it's it's. It's about a restaurant, dude. Go try to find it somewhere. I don't care. Oh, what. I can definitely find it. There you go. Oh, go go Ridge, watch right? it. And yes, and you'll love every minute I of it. I think I've seen clips of him doing... I might watch this tonight then. Because I've seen... You I should. think I've seen a clip of him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no. Okay, I'll probably check it out tonight. It although might be on Netflix. Netflix. Yeah. Although you didn't work in a traditional restaurant, let's say, you'll still get a lot of the references. You'll, you'll get the feel for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so this is hilarious. Two things are actually, this is like super, super fucking funny. One is the fact that Pornhub has shot up 12% in its overall viewers since, uh, since the self-isolation and uh, social distancing, I guess the average is about 2.3% or so. So that, that's funny. Um, well, they also gave free premium to all of Italy, which is hype. Mm-hmm. Yep, Italy as an example has been on. All my friends are uh, asking me if I have any, you know, hookins with Italy's Pornhub, and I tell them no. But there's also like <laughs> millions upon millions of videos on Pornhub. I don't think you need premium. <laughs> no, I don't think so either. Also, the what is it? Is it France and Spain are also up thirty percent normal rates? Uh, yeah, just skyrocketing. More are we up twelve percent in Canada? Uh, it's twelve percent. What is the actual thing? So. A uh, new chart showing worldwide traffic is almost okay. is up almost 12% over standard work days. In specific targeted areas, they're up 30% on their own. But when you take it across all areas, like the whole world, then it's up 12%, which is a lot. In just the last month, there have been more than 9 million searches for coronavirus-related pornography. Like, what the f- Why? I don't know, man. There's a bunch of people with What, are they going to cough sex. on them? People yeah, I, I don't know, dude. Uh, but anyways, my guess is it's going to happen. Like they're going to come up with it. But um, the other oh, super they funny have. one, they're already working on it, which I'm, I'm curious as to how that's going to work for them because obviously social distancing is not very possible. Well, uh, my friend saw, uh, he didn't watch the video. He just saw someone wearing a mask. <laughs> 
So it's already, there's already shit going on. There's already themes for coronavirus. Yeah. Crazy. This is, yeah, it's crazy. Um, actually, the scariest thing, I'm going to move on to the next one that's super funny, but I'm going to kind of throw in something really super serious. A 34 year old died in, because he had gone to Disneyland. Fuck, from coronavirus or just in yeah, general? From coronavirus. He had visited Disneyland, he got it, and he died, which is. And well, Disneyland already closed down, though, like a couple days ago, didn't they? Yeah. So I think this was like after he got back, and it didn't take him long. Um, I did watch a video on somebody who had it and they said if you get it you get obviously the flu and then you feel better and then you get much much worse and you end up having pneumonia yeah so pneumonia is like you lose your lung capacity and so my guess is that's the part at least this is the person explaining it but my guess is that's the part that ends up getting people it is respiratory but it might be because of the pneumonia uh, side effect That's, that's the extreme side of it right well, in other news, I, don't know. I got I over my flu and side. feel much better. What happened? I got over my flu and feel much better. <laughs> well, how long ago was that? That was a, that was a week ago. Oh, uh, yeah, I got sick Monday. So we were together on Sunday. No, you got sick. You said you got sick on Thursday. Uh, no, like, the, I actually started getting, like, so it wasn't this Monday. Sorry, like, last Monday. So around two weeks ago now. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 I started like getting a sore throat and shit like that, and then I started getting healthier like this Monday. It was when I really started like feeling it go up. Hmm. See, so that in that no, case, just a bit of a stuffy was, nose. Yeah, if it was two weeks ago, then then you're probably fine. Um, mm-hmm. Now the only thing is if you, yeah, the, if it's two weeks ago, then you're probably fine. Now the only downside for D is if you end up having something like it, and then gave it to me in Bass because we were over at Bass's on Sunday. Well, I've also oh. been with my whole family in my house for two yeah. weeks, and they haven't got sick, so I feel like okay, it's yeah. just a fucking flu. Yeah. Probably. And there weren't any reports when you got it anyway, so we ended up getting yeah, it no. recently in Sask. So, okay, well, I mean, anyways, now let's get into something really funny. Uh, the butthole controversy around cats. I, I feel it's, robbed. It's Because so I saw that funny. movie in theaters, it's, and it's, I did not see a single asshole. That's so funny <laughs> that that's a thing. Not only that, okay, so this is a tweet that somebody had sent out. So this one guy said, I desperately need a tell-all book about the making of cats. It could really help me get through this. Um, and this was like March 17th, so like two days ago. Somebody tweeted him. He said, a VFX producer friend of a friend was hired in November to finish some of the 400 effect shots in Cat's movie. His entire job was to remove CGI buttholes that have been, cert- have been inserted a few months before, which means that somewhere out there, there exists a butthole cuts- cut of Cat's. <laughs> so that is so, so fucking funny. Apparently, here, look, check this out. Let's see if this actually works. This doesn't work. Does this work? Are you looking okay, for I'll check this out. Holes? Uh, no, I was going to try and share my screen for this article, but apparently it says Ryan Johnson and Seth Rogen are among some of the filmmakers demanding. Oh, I, I thought they saw it. Never mind. I'm sorry. But no, that's crazy. Because honest to God, why that's... the fuck would they even think that was a good idea in the first place? Yeah, I don't like, get who... it. Maybe, I mean, probably for uh, accuracy, but why are there so many shots of cat's buttholes? I don't know. Honest and to God, you just need to watch this movie to understand how fucking stupid so much of this shit was. Well, it won so many six, questions. It's a six-time Razzie winner, including the worst picture, and fated to go down in history without living out its complete version of Cat Buttholes. Well, nobody and wants so, to win Razzies, though. <laughs> no, for sure. But that just makes it funny. This might, do you think this is worse than The Room? Uh, I don't know. Here's the thing. So The Room was at least enjoyable in the sense where like, cause so for a quick review of cats, I know I did this before, but for me, I genuinely could not understand like 90% of the film. Like they were singing the entire time. And for a lot of the songs, I actually couldn't like distinguish the words in the songs. Yeah. So literally just like, I just heard music and that and just like random voices. There you uh, go. I think the room is better because the room actually had somewhat of a storyline. Like cats literally, uh, it was about and like it was about jellical cats doing jellical things, <laughs> and you don't know what jellical means in this fucking movie because they never explain it once. But that's what the movie's about. Awesome, so, that's what you want, right? Makes no sense. I will say though, I did like uh, magical Mister Mistopheles the song. That was a banger. I actually sang to it in a the theater. 
Uh, but other than that, there was <laughs> one was song I liked. It was a banger. Like we had all our, like, we had like eight people from Landmark went to go see it, and we were all that was near the end of the movie, and we were all just fucking singing along in the theater with like four other people. Jeez, that's funny. Oh man, I just thought that was so funny. Um... I think a disaster artist movie based like a kind of like a disaster artist themed movie based on Cats would be such a fucking good idea. I bet you there's going to be something. There, I think there will be something, but who knows? In like 20 years. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's all I have right now, actually, because I didn't really take too many good notes this week. I watched 8 Mile yesterday. Still so good. And I haven't uh, finished 8 Mile. I got halfway through, like, last time I was watching. And I just It wasn't that it was bad. I just went to bed, and I never fucking finished it, but I really want to. Yeah, you got to restart it. Um, mm-hmm. What is it? Vin Diesel's Bloodshot coming to VOD. I wonder how many more of these movies are actually just going to come out in VOD. Uh, yeah. Invisible Man is coming out tomorrow. Actually, I saw, I had a list, so I was sending it to my streaming guy. <laughs> I heard it was uh, good. Invisible Man, I know, I, I saw the end of it and when I was doing theater checks, and it looked like, I, everybody said it was really good. But let me see here, one second. So there's Invisible Man, uh, Emma, and The Hunt will release tomorrow. And The Hunt literally came out, like, last week, I think. Uh, and then Trolls World Tour will be available on April 10th. Mm-hmm. And a bunch more from Warner Brothers, I think, are coming out soon. Mm-hmm. I think Birds of Prey already did come out, or will be soon. Yeah. Well, well, well. I have All one right. more thing I just saw, by the way. Yeah, go for it. I think it's, this thing's still recorded. It hasn't kicked us out yet, so. It said... It said you updated it or upgraded on my... No, what, what it said was, hey, Zoom, uh, if you... if it's giving people the free 40 minutes. So I don't know how much longer it's going to let us roll with this free one. So keep going. Okay, and so now, quickly. Yeah. Uh, there's a rumor right now that Marvel's president, Kevin Foggy has reportedly had conversations with Sony about co-producing a spider woman film. Hmm. There's also a solo uh, who's, I think this is a guy's name. Solo is James Bourne. Who's like a hero in Spider-Man's universe or a villain. And Man Wolf, who's John Jameson, spinoffs are also reportedly in development as part of the Sony universe. Okay. So I don't know. I don't really. I think Spider Woman would be interesting, but I don't really. I don't think we need it. No. Man Wolf and Solo, I don't give a flying fuck about. Because the Spider Woman live action doesn't matter because we're gonna. We should get Spider Gwen mm-hmm. in the in the universe, like the animated. Did you guys Lightning. also hear the rumors of Andrew Garfield apparently talking with Sony about coming back in a live action Spider Verse? I think you, you've been throwing a lot of this out a lot, and there's been talks and talks. I'm sure. I'm sure they're talking about it. I'm sure. Are you talking about that one I was talking about last week? The what? Sorry, yeah. Vasily. Right, is this the one that? Oh, like we were talking about last week. Where yes. I was saying that the no, it's it's oh, legit. Okay. It's an actual guy that wrote that the Amazing Spider-Man two, and he's working on a separate Sony or a separate Spidey movie that's not connected to anything. It's not throwing it out like this is at, like that was actual like Robert Orchie is the guy's name. Looking him up. So hmm. this guy is actually is he doing Tasm three? You then? I don't know any more information. I just know that the Amazing, he Spider-Man, did Amazing Spider-Man two, and he's working on another okay. Spider-Man, but it's not gonna be Amazing Spider-Man three. At least I don't think so, but who knows? Yeah, there's a lot of spider. There's also one that came out two days ago about uh, Kevin Smith. People were kind of taking it as he knew inside scoop, but he didn't. He was just saying, hopefully, uh, he's people. I think there's been a rumor for a long time. Like I think we even talked about this when Far From Home came out, but uh, Marvel Studios wanting to bring back Charlie Cox as Matt Murdock for the third Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, just a rumor was... right now. Like there's no there's no yeah. weight to it, but I think that'd be a very good idea. I think they should bring, if they go forward, then Charlie Cox has to be in it because he is actually part of canon. Mm -hmm. Like he's like, because they mentioned the incident, okay? And they have references to the Avengers and stuff. So in my mind, they're canon in a way, obviously. Well, they still haven't like made them not canon. They just kind of canceled it and that was it. They never actually stated that it's not canon. So there's hope for him to come in. But they literally have the photo of... um, the who's fucking thing one of the anyways the hulk the hulk with um edward norton that's the one the hulk with edward norton they have that ar- news article in the back of like the one guy's the one uh reporter's 
desk. Okay. And they reference the incident and they show mm-hmm. a Chitari thing collapse over top of a building, which I don't know how they got that photo, but they got it. So uh, anyway, so I think that it would make sense for them to bring him back and bring back um, Vincent D'Onofrio as Kingpin. Oh, they've got to. Like, I don't give a shit about the other Daredevil or the other Netflix characters, truthfully. I think, like, yeah. the only the ones that appeared in Daredevil, so, like, Punisher, Kingpin, and all the other side characters, like, that, they could easily, like, immigrate into the MCU, and they just do so well. Yeah, you mean integrate, not immigrate. <laughs> well, it kind of works both ways. <laughs> They're immigrating into the MCU, but yes, I, you're I, right. Yeah, I, would be, I would be fine with... I would be fine with all of them except for Iron Fist because he's just annoying and they didn't know what to do with him. They did a really terrible job with him. But uh, I would be okay with the with Luke Cage. I thought he was pretty good. Um, Jessica Jones, I thought like she did. I like Jessica Jones. Yeah, like season one was good. Season I never three saw was season a, two. There is season three one was seasons. Great. There is three. Um, oh fuck. Season one was really really good. Season mm-hmm. two went off the rails a bit. Season three was like fifty fifty but they focused a lot on her friend who became really annoying after a while. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I just want Jess- I want more Jessica Jones. That's what I care about. I don't care about anything else. So, yeah. I hope it happens, though. That would be sweet. Yeah, oh, we um, didn't talk about uh, Black Widow getting delayed, did we? No, but that's kind of in the beginning of it. We just said everything's getting delayed. Oh, that yeah. kind of fucks the MCU, though, like the schedule-wise, because we have Eternals in November. Yeah, that's and like probably... I think the latest Black Widow can come out is probably August if they want to like keep Eternals in the November slot. And that also fucks I... the Disney Plus shows because those are on hiatus for now, mm-hmm. and that kind of is important to the I think overall theme of the MCU, like when they release. If I'm not mistaken, Black Widow won't screw up anything because Black Widow's already dead, and so that's true. it's like we're we're but Taskmaster like a step if he does survive. Yeah, that would be the only thing. Um, is, is, do we say that he's the villain in, uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think know. Taskmaster. Okay. I think it's, or Taskmaster, not Masker. Uh, I think it's Baron Zemo. Oh, right. That's I the one. think it might be, I think Crossbones potentially. I think there was like rumors of him surviving the blast in Civil War somehow. That would be mm. stupid. I wouldn't want yeah, that. Yeah, I don't, he kind of like very died, but I know yeah. Baron Zemo 100%. Yeah, it could be legit. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I think it's going to be like, it's yes, it's going to screw that up, but it's also screwing up everything ever, mm-hmm. everywhere. Yeah. So, I mean, like that's, I think in the grand scheme of things, it's the it's least of their worries. I am curious to see what's going to happen after everything is dealt with. Like, obviously we're going to get past this. I mean, yeah, the Spanish 100%. flu, bubonic, bubonic plague took out a third of most people in Italy, I remember, and that was due to the rats. Um that was a long time ago. <laughs> long, long time ago. That was like 14. No, I was like, is that 1433? Anyways, it was around that time. The only reason I know that is because I'm reading a biography on Leonardo da Vinci. So um, anyways, we're going to get past this. I'm curious to see what's going to happen after. And what I'm reminded of is in Avengers when Nick Fury is like, last year Earth got a visitor and we yeah. were hopelessly, hilariously underprepared or outgunned or something like that. So yeah, it's both. kind of it's kind of one of those situations right now where we we are pretty much un, very underprepared as a as a society, as a species. Mm-hmm. It's like oh, whatever. Our infrastructure well, can't handle a lot of what's going on, which is it's crazy for sure. Yeah. And but it's so much stuff. So after it's like, okay, what's going to happen to the tech phases? What's going to happen to a bunch of these jobs where they been having people work remotely? Uh, what new implementations are going to be in place mm-hmm. for the world going forward? And, you know, no. there's just so much stuff. Like number one, no bats. Don't eat bats. <laughs> yeah. Don't eat bats. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's going to be, it's going to be just crazy. so stupid with like, our society is just so fucking dumb. Like with toilet paper, with hoarding just essentials. Like I saw a photo on Facebook of some guy with a cart stacked full like Tetris of fucking earmuffs. And it's like, well, why are you just being so selfish in the sense where like you're trying to make a profit off of this? I, yeah, I, I think... Oh, they're I mean, stopping they're all that by doing it for themselves. Yeah. There's tons of people that have been hoarding for a long time. Like yeah. they have... Well, hoarding, and like, but it's not essential. No, it's kind of like, who cares? Those are couponers. Those are different. But they, these people are trying to profit off this disaster. 
kind of thing. And they're yeah. they're not allowed to sell any of that shit, and they're going to be pro- persecuted for sure, and prosecuted, can, persecuted and prosecuted. Yeah, if if anybody gets to them, I mean, the reality is, what if we're in this thing for eighteen months? Like, we could hmm. be doing, you know, our an episode later on down the road, and it's like, hey, guess what? Nothing's changed. Everything's the same, and like everything's fucked still. Mm-hmm. That's a uh, long ass time for a, a, a population of people to be fucked. Now, I don't, I actually don't believe that's going to be the case. But no. I know that early reports are saying that 18 months could be a social distancing reality. Which, mm-hmm. what's that going to do to mm-hmm. everything? It's going to affect everything on such a such a fundamental level. So the people that Our are whole economy right will now, be fucked. You can't make everything. Uh, will, everything will be money. fucked. The whole world yeah. will be fucked. Yeah. My my concern though is. What happens when, like, it's been four or five, six months? Are people going to start, like, is the purge going to happen? Are we all going to be, ba- like, is it going to be like a Last of Us situation where we're all, like, barricading doors and stuff because there's marauders out there trying to get after people? Like, it's an extreme circumstance based on the fact that I've watched too many movies and played too many games. But mm-hmm. there's, I, I don't know what an end game would look like to something like this. Well, you know. well, my boss at Landmark was saying he, like, because he was reading up on this to make, you know, like, no one that theater should c- come back. So I was asking him about it. And he was saying that he was, like, reading some experts saying, estimating about six to eight weeks of, like, just, like, isolation until it kind of starts winding down. Because I saw this one graph and it was, like, if you're all self-isolated, like, the amount of people you contaminate in large groups is, like, cut drastically in half. Mm-hmm. So if you're all self-isolated for, like, say, a month straight, you're not like you're not infecting anyone uh if you do survive the coronavirus like you're gonna be fine because again it lasts about a week two weeks uh for most people if you're not in that demographic where you're gonna get fucked or just some well, odd circumstance well yeah because i was gonna say like that one kid was only 34 yeah. years old now there's there's also the thing of what underlying underlying uh, health issues did he have and mm-hmm. that's also plays into it. So like Soph and I went to the doctor when was it in October and both of mm-hmm. us are like, everything's good. Like we don't have anything that came up. Luckily, like, you know, even me as a, as a smoker of many, many years, lucky enough that, you know, we're both pretty healthy. So we could be okay, but you know, there's, it's, it's, it's what happens when you get the symptoms of the disease and with all the other stuff that you have. But yeah. My real concern is that even with all this stuff going on, I'm still seeing, and my very first thing that I spoke about three weeks ago was that, oh, hey, people seem to have been forgetting a bunch of their political BS, and yet now it's coming back, and everyone's using this as a, like, a, a political thing. Like, left, right, give people all the money, don't give people all the money. Like, <laughs> oh, where's your guns now? Where are your guns now? Like, it, it's, I've been noticing more and more people trying to take political stances and using this as for some reason as a way for them to boost themselves up somehow online and it's actually like disgusting hmm. i just annoys me with the pol- politics of how like everybody needs to nitpick every single thing that is said like i understand people don't like trudeau they don't like trump whatever but it's just it fucking irritates me because i don't it's a different demographic between you guys and me because you guys you know the people may have some merit to what they're saying they may have some weight because they at least have s- somewhat of an understanding of what the fuck they're talking about but like for my demographic like i think trump called the coronavirus the chinese virus or the chinese flu or whatever and yep. people are calling him racist and like i don't know if it's i don't know if it is racist in my mind it's like he's saying because it originates from china and it, yeah, made, I don't know, it made sense to me at the very little yeah so like i don't think it's racist like i i think he shouldn't call it the china mm-hmm. virus but i'm like people just need to Stop making it. Stop making everything political. Not everything has to be political. And it just fucking angers me. Yeah, it, it's it's really um, yeah. It's it's just one of those things where it's like you would hope that a global catastrophe like what's going on right now would actually stop people from acting this way. But unfortunately, there's always people out there that are going to look for an angle, and that's what some people are using this as right now is an angle, like some little soapbox that they can stand on in Facebook land to make uh, like themselves look cool. And every mm-hmm. single person with their, I don't normally post this stuff like this, but, and then write five paragraphs. Mm-hmm. First of all, based on the algorithms alone, very few people are going to read what you're writing. Second yep. of all, no one cares. Like, do you really want to make people hate you 
when all of this subsides because you're, I don't know, and maybe not hate, but there's a point where it's just like, your opinion does not matter. Just self-isolate, shut the fuck up, watch some movies, and we'll get by past this. This is not mm-hmm. time to, oh, I'm going to make a political statement so that everyone knows I'm, I don't know, more in tune with what's going on with the next person. That's what bothers me the most right now. I could give a shit about self-isolation. Mm-hmm. Anyways. So everybody's got something to say. Yeah, and I mean, ironically enough, I've just said that part. So, I mean, so yeah, who, like, who, who are you guys? Who do you think you are? Yeah. Uh-huh. Who do you think you are? Actually, we the first the first day of quarantine, we were watching uh, um, uh, Departed. That was our first. Uh, oh yeah. That was our first uh, or our Q one, I guess, movie. Yesterday was Eight Mile. Yeah. I didn't have something for Q two. I think we were. I forget what we were watching, but. And, and right. we need to give you a list of all the movies you have not watched, and take you guys need to watch Paris while you can. Light, great yeah. film. Whatever. I yeah, I know you said that. Yeah. Y'all, I'm like, you gotta watch it. I was, I was a door okay. too. Okay, let's let's not talk about a movie that came out like a month ago versus like timeless classics that you have not even this one watched off at all. Fucking Oscar it's, for best what, film. Like I said, yeah. it's just recent. <laughs> it's a tough. It's so hard because there's so much stuff that I, like a lot of us haven't seen, and there's so much stuff that we still need to see that came out in the last year. So, but yes, I Anthony, I think it is a good idea to watch Tarantino some of the older movies. stuff first. What was that? What are you watching? Uh, is it waiting? Wait, I have it on my yes. keyboard. Waiting, waiting. Yeah, with Ryan Reynolds. If you'll get it, we'll watch. Have you seen the Godfather's? Nope. Watch those. Lord of the Rings. Vast. We'll, we'll send Lord of the after. Rings because that's we've a been, no too. We've huh? been at this for a while. Let's just hold off. I don't even know if this is going to record. I think we surpassed so. forty minutes. No, no, no. no. Still, we, we we definitely it's still did. Recording. It's still no, recording. no, no. I I know, but I need oh. to see what, oh, what okay. we're going to get out of this because there might. There's a very real possibility that we have to record again, like tomorrow. Oh, well. Uh, or we we'll take a week out. off and figure it out as we go. But um, I'll anyways, do anything tomorrow. You can't go anywhere. Get, yeah, exactly. I'll be here. Uh, it's casual Friday tomorrow. I, oh, you know what's super fucking funny? I've been working from home since Monday, and I've been late for work two out of the four, two out of the three days. You one for that? Do you actually <laughs> have to like be My there desk or is, just do shit? No, no, no. My desk is literally the kitchen table, which it's like we're in a condo. And I have to roll out of bed and I've been late for work the first two days that I've it's, been working yeah. from home. It's so, I was realizing that yesterday and I thought it was just so funny because it's Does anyone gonna, care? Like, no, but like, so we're still supposed to work, but mm-hmm. you're know. logged in. You can, they, you can see if you're logged in or not. That's the thing because you're jumping yeah. on the. Right, you have to jump on a server or that kind of thing. The, the VPN, There's, yeah, yeah. And, so there you go. To, Once, and we have to provide um, a report at the end of the day about what we did. It's all monitored. Just leave that, it. And, that, and that's the thing. It's here. just as long as there's accountability. Like this, as working from home thing is something a lot of people would like the option to on a regular basis. Although being in a traditional office space obviously is sometimes better. Um, I would not want to do you're not this. Though, like, all the time mm-hmm. exactly you'd like the option to do it if you chose once in a while but not to have to do it that's a i think the story. difference between having the option to just not go into work when i don't feel like it mm-hmm. is different than because right now it's like i'm at home but i'm working and it took me a while like today i was actually quite productive uh yesterday and the day before was like i'm getting increasingly more productive but i really wish i wish i was at the office because I can like I, I just I'm just that type of person. I just can't. I it's, I don't it's, mind it's it. Two but. worlds. It's the two worlds colliding because like yeah. this is your your home space. You're in a different mindset when you're there. But once you create it as a workspace, you're like, okay, I got to think about this differently. It's yeah, like doing mostly. university work at my house. Like I went to the university yesterday and actually like because I tried uploading my website, but apparently I ran out of fucking space, so I can't even upload my full website. And my instructor is kind of just. I asked them to help me and they meet me and they just haven't responded. So I guess I'm going to go fuck myself. But I just yeah, stayed yeah. there for like two hours yesterday reading my book for my final and just doing work there because doing it here is it's such a fucking, such a struggle. So yeah. many distractions. Well, we'll see how much longer we got to do this. Hopefully, who knows? Maybe we'll get some good news by the end of, by April 1st. Who knows? We still got a couple of weeks. April uh, Fools. Oh my a- God. Don't. That would be such a mean joke. <laughs> and I think I'm going wow. to. <laughs> uh, On my meme page, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, okay.
that's it. This is our first uh, quarantined episode, a self-isolated episode. Um, obviously, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to apologize anymore for the audio because it's just the way that it is, but uh, I'm glad we got this up and running and we can just keep running episodes like this and do some more stuff and maybe even get more people on here. Um, yeah. Do like, I don't know, we probably get, get Arturo in. in the casual yeah, Arturo. In, yeah. Arturo, I was talking to Arturo and this guy, respect to Arturo, shout out Arturo. He works, uh, I think two jobs and then we get the DMs cause he works like at Amazon, like actually at, oh, at the actual like kind of warehouse and this guy's doing like fucking crazy hours like i think it's fucking like it's in the middle of the night to like early morning let me try and find this dude our tour, uh, man. yeah Much 6 respect. to six thirty. so 12 hour shifts this man works it's hmm, fucking insane man. dude I so yeah you, shout out to arturo shout out to arturo i hope you're uh i hope you're safe man I hope you oh but you know what coronavirus may have shut that shit down so maybe his schedule might have opened up yeah yeah that's what he wants that's what everybody wants i think eventually people hey, are going to be like you know what having podcast. jobs is good mm-hmm. but yes yes well we can get him on here now that we know this stuff okay um that's it make sure you're following the dot f dot word dot podcast uh until we get the name change i think in you know, like a week and a half or so we're gonna be able to change the name uh, yep. the I think we yeah and then on facebook same yep. kind of deal um lazy canadian on instagram as well um and you know wherever you're following from i hope you guys are safe and you're enjoying all the content that you're going to be getting because i think a lot of people are going to discover content creating uh pretty quick here um, we're posting baller content on the f word so like follow share yes, comments yes. do and everything the youtube and the youtube channel mm-hmm. um yeah so again thanks again for tuning in gentlemen thanks for joining me i will probably talk to you soon if this thing doesn't work then we'll definitely be redoing this again tomorrow uh that's it i'm g it's your boy anthony it's bad (laughs) and we are out